Huh? But it doesn't have this other function. <laughs> that it makes us think it makes other people think we're cool. Well, why do we want other people to think we're cool? What what is that anyway? What do I have to do? What does my business have to do with what's in another person's consciousness? I mean, that is not when you think about it, that's a little bit nuts. Huh? Actually, it's more than a little bit. <laughs> it's really crazy. Because you don't ever have to experience another person's consciousness. You only experience your consciousness. I only experience my consciousness. Whatever I experience goes, in with, goes on within my own consciousness. Uh, if I pinch myself, you don't feel it. Huh? I don't know what you're thinking. And you don't know what I'm thinking unless we tell each other. That we but what is the value of desiring another person to think about us in a particular way? Well, think about it. What's the value? Actually, each and every one of us is a sovereign living entity in charge of our own field of activities, which is called the body and mind. And so what we experience whether we enjoy or suffer, or whether we grow wiser or more foolish, depends completely on our own activities, completely on our own conception of life. If our conception of life matches reality, then things go nice and smooth and we develop further in wisdom and knowledge and truth. And if our conception of reality goes against the actual reality, then we struggle and suffer, and then we, we become degraded. Huh? So, this process of devotional service, then, is about voluntarily becoming a servant. And the first part of being a servant is given here, shravanam kirtanam, smarna. Hearing, chanting, and remembering. We hear from the sadhus. We hear from the, the expert souls who can cut away the material nonsense covering our real intelligence. Uh -huh. And they tell us you have to hear from the scriptures. Shravana. Shravana, and then what? Kirtana, chant. First you hear, then you chant. What does that lead to? Smarnam. Smarnam means remembering. So we remember the Lord, think about him, contemplate his different qualities and activities and his holy name. And because of this association with transcendental sound vibration, we revive our original consciousness. And we've talked about this as, as you get deeper into our teaching. Uh, we've talked about the whole mechanism and how this works. It's a deeply psychological process. Uh, but it works even if you don't know how it works. Even if, if you just execute the process, just chant this mantra, uh, or any nice Vishnu mantra, the process works. Of course, it works better if you know what you're doing. Uh, just like the car will go, is all you have to know is to put the key and step on the gas, and the car will go. Of course, if you also know that you have to put gas in it once in a while, <laughs> that will help. Huh? Or change the oil. What to speak of if the car is broken? You have to know how it works to fix it. See, the spiritual master, that what he does is he fixes people's consciousness. Consciousness is broken. Consciousness is in a false state, in a diseased state. We have a, a false idea of reality, and so we're suffering. But if we take up this process and study these scriptures, gradually our picture of reality, our idea of what is real, changes by this spiritual education to match the actual reality. And when that happens, then we start to experience the real pleasure in life. I think you can see while we were chanting today that uh, we're getting some spiritual pleasure. Right? This is called rasa. Rasa means enjoyment of rasa. 
Huh? Rasa is the, the thing, and rasa means the possessive case. Right? Sanskrit. In Sanskrit, in some declensions, we make the possessive by lengthening the first vowel. So, what is the what is that thing which is possessed by the sweet taste of Krishna consciousness? That's transcendental pleasure, not rasa. So when we experience, when we engage in rasa, we experience rasa. Okay. When we engage in the sweet taste of chanting, hearing, remembering Krishna. Nanda Nandana, the son of Nanda Maharaj, then we experience great pleasure. Huh? And we can explain all the technical details of why that's so, but the main thing is the experience. Huh? Then, once you have this experience repeatedly, many times, and you understand if it's something uh, uh, reliable, you can repeat, you can have this experience anytime just by following the process. Then you start to understand how it works, why it works, and how our intelligence has become covered by material knowledge, material desire, and then how we can clean that intelligence, Chaito Garpana Marginum, clean the mirror of the mind or the mirror of consciousness. Consciousness is like a mirror. No? Do we have a mirror? No. no. Okay. Anyway, if you have a mirror, <laughs> you just have to imagine. And you hold the mirror up to the sun, then the mirror reflects the sun, and it looks like the mirror is glowing. It looks like the mirror is emitting light. Huh? But what is a mirror? It's just a piece of glass with silver on the back. It doesn't really have the ability to emit light. No, it's nothing. It's just a piece of glass with silver. But we see when we hold it up to the sun, it looks like the sun. Or if we hold it up to something red, then it turns red. If I hold it up to my face, then I see my face in it. You see, the mirror takes on whatever qualities of the thing reflected in it. Similarly, the consciousness takes on the qualities of whatever we reflect in it. So when we reflect God, our consciousness takes on godly qualities. When we're conscious of worldly things, it takes on worldly qualities. No? This world is called Sukha Dukha, happiness and distress, alternating, flickering, happiness and distress. Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. Sometimes having good day, bad day. Right? Or like in, like we talk when we talk about astrology, we say sometimes the astrology is bad and sometimes it's worse. <laughs> it's always bad. <laughs> because it's material. It's material. Everything material is bad. Why? Because it means birth and death. Old age, disease, ignorance, foolishness, sinful activities. Huh? If we cultivate these sinful activities, then we get a bad result. So please use your intelligence. Try to understand how to become pure. Uh, we become pure by this process of shravana, kirtana, smarana, and then vandana. Vandana means worship. Huh? Instead of worshiping some corporation, Trying to get material blessings that are going to evaporate in time anyway. And now even more because the economy is falling apart. You know, why pursue these things? Why not just concentrate on spiritual advancement? Worship, pandana, pada sevana. Save, serve the lotus feet of Krishna. Huh? What does this mean? Pada, serve, serve the lotus feet. That means to approach the deity of Krishna in the temple and render service. Serving Krishna directly in his transcendental form. Now, most people 
they don't have any contact with Krishna directly through their consciousness. So in the beginning, they have to approach Krishna through the deity that formed in the temple. That's all right, because the deity form is transcendental, just like Krishna. See, whatever is in touch with Krishna is transcendental, and whatever is separated from Krishna is mundane. That's the difference between matter and spirit. You want to know what is spiritual and what's material? Well, from the absolute point of view, everything is spiritual because everything is emanating from Krishna. Try to understand. Everything that exists emanates from the absolute and returns to the absolute at the end. Even the material world uh, where everything is temporary. But when that same 